Ahoy! The Greatsword is one of the most potent damage weapons in New World and at the moment I see a lot of people not using it to its full potential yet or misunderstanding the weapon a little bit. Today I'd like to share with you some of the information that I've gathered so that you can get the most out of your Greatsword. The focus of this video specifically will be on PvE, both solo as well as dungeons and mutations, but obviously a lot of the information will carry over to PvP as well. Keep in mind that this video concerns itself with more advanced greatsword mechanics and goes more in-depth on all the different things you could be doing. Whereas I have a beginner guide as well. If you're interested in that, I will link it here. So you can check that out first and then come back to this for the further progression into the depth of what is possible with the greatsword. In this video I'm going to show you quite a few skill trees. But I don't want to repeat myself too much when it comes to perk choices, so I'm going to explain to you the perks in the beginning and why which ones are important or less important, and then we look into the individual skill trees, ability choices and weapon choices. So since we are looking to deal damage, we are starting of course with the Onslaught tree. In the first row you have two perks. The first one is Giant Slayer, it increases your base attack damage by 20% when attacking enemies above 90% health. Translated to a full target with all of the damage you deal across the entire time span of its health, that's a 2% damage increase. In my opinion, not that good, because you can usually get a higher damage increase from other perks, which you'll see later, and also usually stronger mobs, bosses and stuff don't really do most of the mechanics early on, and the phase from 100% to 90% health is actually over relatively quickly compared to everything that comes after. If you have a spare point you can use it, but the more important one in my opinion here is Heavy Blade. Charged heavy attacks have 15% armor penetration. This cannot be tested properly on dummies by the way, because they have too low armor values these days, but against other players or against mobs you will definitely notice a significant difference. This is just a straight up 15% damage increase as long as you're heavy attacking. In the next row, the first perk that we can choose is Swift Onslaught. This gives you 20% haste for 5 seconds and then afterwards has a 5 second downtime as well. So half of the time is going to be up. By itself this doesn't really sound useful for PvE when you're just looking to deal the highest amount of damage, but aside of just being a very nice movement tool in general that I would generally recommend, it also is a buff on you and buffs contribute to blade honing which we get to later. So it actually has an additional benefit that we'll talk about later in the video. Likewise, there is Keen Posture. After gaining Onslaught Stance, your next attack within 5 seconds has 100% increased crit chance. Now, many people don't like crit perks that much when it comes to PvE because they say, well, I'm going to be backstabbing most of the time and in those moments it doesn't really benefit me. So, yeah, I might as well skip it. That is technically not entirely wrong, though I do think there are still plenty of situations where you're going to be attacking enemies from the front, not just in solo fights, but also when you're fighting larger groups of mobs or specific bosses where you can't always attack from the back. But on top of that, this again is a buff, and since it is a buff, this also contributes to blade honing. And that is, I think, the major benefit of this perk, along with some nice crit that you can proc into a group sometimes. In the next row, we have Aggressive Shift. This enters the Onslaught stance after using a heavy attack, a charged heavy attack. This is something that's a bit more debatable. I think some people don't like using this as much because it takes a bit of control away from you when you are trying to be in the fine stance and you're trying to use the block. And also, you technically have at least two abilities most of the time to get back into Onslaught stance anyways. However, I think this is still a very useful perk to have, mainly if you have to swap between your weapons. Sometimes, or rather often, I end up using multiple abilities on my greatsword and then I have to quickly switch to my spear to apply an enfeebling skewer, for example, or to apply some perforate rend or something like that. And when that happens, all my stances are gone and having the option to go back into Onslaught Stance with a heavy attack in that moment without needing to wait for any cooldowns, in my opinion, is very valuable. The other perk here is Critical Comeback. Become energized after landing a critical hit and regain 5 stamina and 5% base health per second for 5 seconds. This, again, technically not important when it comes to dealing damage, though the extra stamina is nice considering you're going to be using more stamina when heavy attacking with a greatsword. More importantly though, this is a buff with a 5 second uptime and a 5 second downtime, so again, this contributes to blade honing and increases our damage. Crush the Weak in the next row is also a perk that I see skipped sometimes, 
because it just increases your critical hit chance by 10% when attacking enemies with a debuff. I'll be honest, this is not a super necessary perk, but I also think it is a little bit underrated once again, because I believe that crit still plays a role in PvE as well, especially in solo PvE, and mobs in PvE are constantly debuffed by something. The last non-ability related perk in the Greatsword Onslaught Tree is Step and Strike, which gives you a 10% empower for the next 3 hits within 10 seconds after dodging. I know some people say you're always in power capped anyways, but I do think there are still plenty of situations where that may not be the case for a variety of reasons, and again, it's also another buff for blade honing, so I think this is still valuable. Additionally, attacks empowered by this effect also restore 10 stamina on hit, so that's a nice benefit too. The capstone perk Unrelenting Onslaught reduces your cooldowns by 2% per light attack or 10% per charged heavy attack. Obviously extremely strong and extremely useful, should not be skipped if you're looking to deal the highest amount of damage possible. Since we're just looking for damage output here, the first row of the Defiance Tree is not particularly appealing. We have Cleansing Chain, which reduces the duration of debuffs with the final hit of your attack chain, but it's just 10%, so it's not really that great. On the other side, we have Perfect Vigilance, if you're hit while at full health, reduce damage taken by 20% and gain a 20% fortify for 3 seconds. So it's a 20 seconds cooldown, but I think it's still a nice small benefit to have. And again, it is a self buff too, so blade honing says hello. And now we can finally talk about blade honing. Base damage is increased by 3% for each greatsword buff on you with a maximum of 4 buffs. Between all the buff options that I've shown you in Onslaught, as well as the one in Defiance, you should have near constant uptime of around 3-ish buffs on yourself, depending on how exactly you're playing. So this should be a very constant, consistent damage increase, and this is the reason why you're taking a lot of these self-buff perks most of the time, even though they may not directly benefit you in PvE otherwise. Base damage increases are an extremely strong and important modifier that changes a lot about your general damage output and should not be skipped if you can. In the row below that, we have Unflinching Blade, which makes charged heavy attacks have grit and inflict bleeding for 6 seconds, dealing 5% weapon damage every second, with a maximum of 5 stacks. Obviously, since you're constantly heavy attacking, you're constantly stacking this, and this is just an extremely strong damage increase. The rest of the non-ability related perks in the Defiance Tree aren't really that important for us when it comes to damage output. Arrow deflection to block ranged projectiles can be nice in certain situations if you're dealing with a lot of archers in PvE. And likewise, Faultless Defender can apply a rent to enemies with a perfect block, but usually you shouldn't be the one getting hit unless maybe in solo PvE. But I would say there are generally better and safer ways to apply rent as a damage dealer. At this point, a quick reminder, if you're enjoying the video so far, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell. That really helps my content being seen. Now let's talk about the individual abilities and their perks. Crosscut is the obvious high damage choice that a lot of people will go to, especially in solo PvE, because you just deal a lot of damage very quickly and it has a very satisfying last hit. If you're looking to use Crosscut, you should be using all of its perks. Getting grit while using Crosscut just means that you'll be able to use it in a variety of extra situations where you otherwise might get staggered out of it, and the stun immunity in the fine stance is also nice if you're switching back. And cross execution, making the last hit deal extra damage, is obviously useful if you're planning to deal a lot of damage, so why would you not? The next one, Relentless Rush, is in my opinion the most important ability for the Greatsword because it's kind of something you want to use in every damage build, since there's really no reason not to. If you have the dex perk, then you get extra damage from the 20% slow you apply, otherwise you're still dealing more than normal weapon damage very quickly, twice. You can apply it to a large group of enemies, you can also use it to reposition, and if you have relentless freedom, you can also use it to get out of certain routes, like for example in ice mutations. The first upgrade, Relentless Power, gives you a 10% empower for 10 seconds, which means you can have an almost constant uptime if you're reducing the cooldown of Relentless Rush sufficiently with heavy attacks. And, once again, this is a buff, so blade honing. In the third row we have Adaptive Rush, which applies a route to target that you hit with the ability while in Onslaught Stance, or while in Defiant Stance, heals you for 15% of the damage dealt. I think this one is somewhat skippable in PvE, though the heal can be nice in solo PvE, at the same time a very strong perk in PvP. The Relentless Refresh perk, on the other hand, in my opinion, is extremely strong in PvE. 
reduces the ability cooldown by 50% when you kill a foe with a 5 second cooldown. And this doesn't mean you have to kill them with Relentless Rush. It means you can kill them with anything and that cooldown will still be reset. So that again also means you keep the Empower up way more. So if you're not Empower capped by everything else already, then this is a nice extra benefit to keep that Empower going and keep Blade Honing going. So really a super strong perk overall that you will constantly see being refreshed in any dungeon. When solo farming mobs, this obviously has a little less value depending on what types of mobs you're farming and how easy they are to kill. The third onslaught ability is Skyward Slash. Staggers your target a little bit, deals 80% weapon damage and applies two stacks of 5% rend for 10 seconds. If you're in onslaught stance, then you apply an additional stack of rend. This is very important because this means if you do a heavy attack first, then that can shift you into onslaught stance already, if you have spiked into it, and you can guarantee that third rend. Or you can use Relentless Rush beforehand in order to get this orb crosscut if you're using it. I would always recommend doing so because an extra 5% rend on a target that's not fully rendered yet is just massive. The next part here is probably going to be a bit controversial. Skyfall Sword is a follow-up attack that deals 140% weapon damage in a line in front of you if you're using a light attack after you go up into the air. I don't think that perk is particularly strong. I think the problem with this perk is that it locks you in an animation for way too long and can, especially in PvE against bosses, be very risky. Often you need to move around quickly and avoid attacks or effects and this kind of stops you from doing so in a similar fashion as Crosscut, which we'll get to later. The secondary perk here is Sickening Slash, which makes the first hit of the attack, kind of weird, apply the 20% anti-heal effect for 10 seconds, a disease. So that can be useful against certain mobs in dungeons that have very high amounts of healing through the mutation, for example. But keep in mind, this is just on the first slash and not on the AoE follow-up attack that's now a 3 meter radius. It is worth noting that while Skyward Slash seems like a single target attack, it actually has a bit of a radius itself, so you can hit multiple targets in front of you and apply the rent to them very, very quickly and easily. I personally prefer only putting one point into this in PvE. Very different in PvP, I know, we'll talk about that in the future, but for PvE, I think having just that one quick point so that you can attack enemies very quickly and then move on to other attacks is actually more effective. I also think it's a bit hard to justify specking into it for the anti-heal when it's only 20%. But this is of course just my opinion. If you really like the AoE follow-up and you are not concerned with the long animation, then by all means go for it. All Defiance abilities also serve a purpose in a damage-focused build in one way or another. Calamity Counter allows us to have a quick safety switch when we're getting attacked, which is especially nice in solo PvE. It also is a relatively quick attack cancel, so you can actually very quickly confirm it on an enemy and then switch back to normal attacks. If you spec an extra point into it, you can also inflict bleed with the stacks on it as well, so that's a nice bonus damage factor on it too. The last perk only gives you some extra crit chance in Onslaught Stance for this particular ability, and typically you're not going to go for two Defiance abilities while using a more damage focused build so you won't get the healing effect most of the time so i don't think this is particularly important steadfast strike is somewhat interesting because it is thrust damage instead of slash damage so it's going to be more effective against certain mobs and it also restores stamina on hit which can be useful to some degree it also once upgraded will heal you for 50 percent of the weapon damage of the first strike that i think is a very useful thing to have again you likely won't have a second Defiant Stance ability with it, so you likely won't be able to benefit from the bleeding effect here. The last perk is also nice to have, which reduces the cooldown of all other Greatsword abilities by 20% when hitting it with a second strike, but at the same time, that's not a massive amount when you're already getting 10% reduction from every heavy attack that you do. Roaring Rapture is an ability that I originally dismissed as a damaging ability in a damage build, since it doesn't really come with much damage and has a relatively slow animation, but I completely underestimated the crowd control this comes with. It deals 120% weapon damage in a 4 meter radius and you get some fortify, which isn't really that important to us. But what's important is specking further into it. Purifying Roar cleanses two debuffs after using Roaring Rupture, but really we're getting it to get to the last row. 
Intimidating Raw allows us to apply a 10% weaken for 10 seconds, which can be quite useful in higher mutations so you don't get blown up by larger groups of mobs. And also you become uninterruptible for 5 seconds, so you are basically getting some free grit if you're not running 300 strength. But the real big seller for this ability is Adaptive Rupture. Again, we are primarily using Onslaught abilities, so we're going to use this from Onslaught stats. And that means that our Shockwave will pull enemies 3 meters towards us. And in that sense, it works very similar to a graph well, major difference being that it is originating from you instead of being thrown anywhere you want to. It's not quite as strong as a graph well because of that, but it's still a very effective way to get a group of mobs closer together and pull some ranged enemies into the group for better AoE damage, which the Greatsword excels at. Based on the info that we've now talked about, this is what a very basic solo PvE skill tree could look like, if you want to use crosscut. We have arrow deflection as a little bit of a bonus perk here, but if you say you'd rather go full AoE, then this is also an option. Since you have three onslaught abilities, aggressive shift is less important and this gives you the maximum AoE potential possible. If you don't have the leeching crosscut perk or you're a fan of quicker attacks in general, still want some extra sustain though, then this steadfast strike build is a nice alternative, also reducing your other cooldowns a bit with that. You can kind of choose between Arrow Deflection and Faultless Defender here, depending on which perk suits your playstyle more. And on the topic of solo PvE and crosscut, there's something I'd like to address. Obviously, for solo PvE, crosscut itself is a very strong ability, it is quick damage that actually increases your DPS a little bit over heavy attacking, and when you're solo fighting mobs, most of them don't exactly have effects or attack chains that come with too much of a risk when using the ability. That is different in high level mutations where you need to avoid more stuff, but we're talking about solo PvE right now. Now, the most popular item on New World Database right now is Bloodsucker's Sword, which is a great sword with 29 strength, leeching, crosscut, enchanted, and life stealing. And I am here to tell you that this great sword isn't bad, but very, very overrated. When it comes to raw damage output, there are obviously tons of weapons that deal a lot more damage, especially if you factor in Bane in PvE. But that's not the focus for most players. The focus for most players with this weapon is to have as much lifesteal as possible. You have that lifestealing perk, so every hit you do gives you 5% lifesteal. On top of that, Leeching Crossguard gives you 70% lifesteal on the final hit of the chain. Which also requires you to hit that final attack of the chain, so if the mob happens to jump backwards, you can sometimes lose it. Bloodsucker's Sword is relatively easy to farm because the mob for it is low level, but it's not a super common drop from what I've heard, so people have been spending a lot of time on that. I would recommend spending that time differently. Get yourself a blue or purple greatsword from the trading post, from crafting, whichever you want to. Doesn't have to have much, all it needs to have is trenchant recovery. In the time you need to farm Bloodsucker's Sword, you could easily farm the resources for this or the gold for this. This heals you for around 40% of the damage dealt on every heavy attack that you do. And you do a lot more heavy attacks than third hit cross cuts, which is way more healing overall. This is especially true for the Greatsword because it has fast attack speed on heavy attacks. In the process, you also free yourself from the shackles of having to use crosscut for that extra sustain. And that brings us to what is my preferred PvE group build for dungeons and mutations especially. This build covers pretty much all grounds. You have quick ways to get into onslaught stance, you deal a lot of damage, you have all the amplifying effects you can get, and you also have that extra control through Roaring Rupture, as well as even having the damage reduction from Intimidating Roar, the weaken on enemies, so that you take a little less damage. Of course, there are certain things you can do here to cater the whole build a little bit more towards your specific playstyle. For example, if you say you don't value Intimidating Roar that much, you can instead go for Skyfall Sword if you like that AoE perk of it. Again, I wouldn't recommend it, but I know some people enjoy it. Likewise, you could also shift other points around. Like You can get away without Relentless Refresh, you can get away without Aggressive Shift. You can, for example, also take out Crush the Weak if you don't want that extra kit chance and put that point into Giant Slayer for a little bit of extra damage in specific situations. There is some room here for personal preference, especially also if you're working with a lot of empowers, there are things that can be removed here. But overall I think this is a very nice baseline to work with that I found the most success with overall. If you have a tank that is really really struggling, then this is also a build option that gives you a lot more safety. This will hold you in the fine stance a lot more and you get the extra healing here, 
uh, this is overall just a, a much safer build. You can also, of course, full commit to the left tree minus the right side AoE, which is very similar to the solo PV build, but I personally wouldn't really recommend it. It's just an option if you really, really like this playstyle, but overall this comes with a lot more risk and not a lot of damage increase in comparison. If I could only recommend one build for group PvE, it's absolutely this one. And again, there's a little bit of flexibility in other ways as well. For example, if you feel like you're getting targeted by archers a lot, you could go into arrow deflection here, or you could get faultless defender again. But most of the time, this is what I would go with. When it comes to your ability rotation, you can either open up with a heavy attack or with relentless rush. Either will get you into onslaught stance. This is necessary in order for your AoE to pull enemies together, otherwise that won't happen. So you definitely want to be in Onslaught Stance first. After that, ideally, you also want to go back into Onslaught Stance before you use the Skyward Slash, because if I use it like this, it will put me into Onslaught Stance, but I will only apply two stacks of Rend. So most of the time, I will be heavy attacking quite a fair bit in between to reset stances. So for example, I could be using a heavy attack, and then I could use the Slam, and then I could go into Skyward Slash to swap again and then apply the Rend. When it comes to weapon perks, most of them are absolutely not mandatory for the Greatsword in PvE specifically. If you're using Crosscut, you ideally want to have a Leeching Crosscut. If you're using Relentless Rush, Relentless Freedom, again, is nice in certain mutations, but otherwise not super important. Likewise, Skyward Slash's perk Skyward Nullification will work against certain mob buffs and can be useful in that regard, but again, not super important most of the time. You can absolutely run without any Greatsword specific perks and be completely fine. But there's even more when it comes to the Greatsword, especially for PvP or even for PvE tanking. If you want to hear more about that, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell. Those are videos I'm working on at the moment. In the next days, we'll also talk about more interesting PTR changes and Rune Glass. Thanks for watching, Geeksloth, out.